Welcome to this Catholic Mass on October 20th, 2024, the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Dale Alder, Associate Pastor of Cathedral Parish in Lincoln. This Mass is sponsored by the Diocese of Lincoln. Thank you very much for joining us today, and may God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. 
Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us, who have put our hope in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews, brothers and sisters. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We hear in the first reading from Isaiah, through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. When I was in seminary, uh, one of my professors said a phrase that has stuck with me. He said that, Suffering is the currency of salvation. I mean, we say that salvation was won for us, uh, that it was purchased for us, and that's true. And so naturally, the next question that we would ask is, what did Jesus use to purchase our salvation? The author of life and goodness, he used suffering, he used pain, he used death itself. The gates of heaven, the gates of eternal happiness and bliss were pried open by agony. And so if suffering is what Jesus used to purchase our salvation, then look at how precious, how valuable suffering is. It's more valuable than silver or gold or property. Jesus did not ransom you with any of those things. This isn't to say that we should go out and try to hoard or collect suffering like gold or silver or property. Plenty of it comes our way on its own. Uh, Even as we try our best to live holy and virtuous lives, sure. But when it does come, 
There is no need to be afraid of it or to hate it or to be angry about it. When you suffer, you're participating in the very thing that Jesus has used to save you. Yes, our weakness can make it difficult to embrace. The cross is rough. It is heavy. But the letter to the Hebrews we read today, he reminds us that Jesus has been tested in every way and that he can sympathize with our weakness. Jesus didn't become man and go through his crucifixion just to have extra reasons to condemn your shortcomings and your struggles. He did this because he wanted to save you, because he loves you. And in the gospel, Jesus asks James and John if they could drink the cup with which he would drink. And remember too, you know, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, on the night before his crucifixion, he prayed to the Father saying, my Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. James and John, even though, again, they don't totally recognize what they're doing, they say, yes, they can drink from this cup. And Jesus affirms, even though they don't understand it, that yes, they would be able to drink it. Whatever cup Jesus has given you, he gives you the strength to drink it as well. We may ask in prayer for it to pass, like Jesus did, but also like Jesus, we need to pray, not as I will, but as you will. And so here at this Mass, we offer to the Heavenly Father a cup as well, the one that contains the blood of our Savior. And so with all these things in our hearts and minds, you know, may we follow what the letter to the Hebrews says today. Let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. And now to stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who is crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess from baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we are called to serve our brothers and sisters, we are called to serve our brothers and sisters. Let us carry out our responsibilities as disciples and call on the name of the Lord on behalf of those in need. That the church may continue to preach the gospel with vigor and call us to turn away from sin to a new life in God's love we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all missionaries may receive the strength they need from the Lord and that all the faithful may be more aware of their own call to spread the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may seek guidance of the Lord to enable them to better serve their people with integrity and justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that Jesus, who sympathizes with our weaknesses, may grant forgiveness and healing to all who have committed the sin of abortion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the victims of war, violence, poverty, or injustice may be assisted and comforted by those who serve in the name of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that those who have died may experience the grace and mercy of Jesus, and enter into eternal life with him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear our prayers for all those in need. We trust in your faithful love, which is your gift to all, and ask you to hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed with your with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hello, my name is Bishop James Conley, the Catholic Bishop of the Diocese of Lincoln. As Catholics, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is the greatest and most powerful prayer we can offer because it is through the Mass that we celebrate the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. We are happy to make this broadcast available for those who are unable to come to Mass in person and also for those who are not Catholic but might be interested in our faith. If you would like more information about the Catholic faith, please use the information on the screen to contact us, or you may contact your local parish. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you and your loved ones.